<laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> oh my god. What's up, everybody? <sighs> All right, we're back. And you know, I don't like to, I mean, I like to take my experiences and put them out there for you guys to see and for you guys to relate to them and, you know, see what I'm doing and hopefully apply it to your daily lives, right? You know, as you guys know, I'm a human being. Um, you know, I'm not perfect, dude. And uh, anyways, long story short, I'm at the hall right now. I missed class uh, maybe three weeks ago. Yeah, I got laid off and then I was busy. I got caught up and I had no money and all this stupid stuff, all these little decisions that I made kind of ended up to me not making it to class. But, you know, I went to go see the board. I had to go uh, talk to like five of the guys at a part of the, the hall, you know, that on the, the union board. And they basically decided, you know, what, what was my, uh, what's my consequence to make up for missing class. And they came up with basically coming back here for a week and doing, you know, whatever odds and ends that the union needs. So, you know, I took this as an opportunity to basically just practice, you know, any skills that I want to. I mean, we're here at the hall, dude. There's so much stuff that, that needs to be done. There's so many things, uh, you know, that that's like equipment and stuff that's here. And so I'm kind of just like running my mind. They basically, were, they kind of gave me a list of things to do, but then they also said, you know, if you just see some shit that needs to get done, just go ahead and do it. So, you know, you gotta be a little proactive, dude. What I did, Basically, I practice, you know, a little bit of my welding skills. I'm practicing a little bit of my torching. And, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. You know, we're just, uh, you know, these little hold, these little stands for the welding test that hold the pieces in place, you know, that you can, you can uh, tack your test to or whatever while you weld. They are all tacked to, to fucking buck two or whatever, dude. And there's just so much, you know, weld on these things. So that I basically had to cut off these angles that are welded to these pipes and then re-weld, you know, cut some angle, re-weld that angle to the pipe. <laughs> and so it seems like a very easy task, all right? Because it, I mean, it is a very easy task. And they said that I can get the, I could use a saw, the band saw, you know, there's grinders there, there's all this and that. But I'm like, you know what, dude? I'm going to take this and I'm going to use it as an opportunity to practice my, my, uh, my torch cutting. Right. And it wasn't, you know, yeah, you could just, just torch that, that angle right off. Just cut that, that pipe, just, you know, a straight line, which in some cases that's kind of what I did, but what kind of got me up to this point, right. What I was thinking is I want to make this you know, I want them to be as nice as possible. You know, I wanna, you know, wanna have just one single cut and that's all I gotta do. You know, I don't wanna have to bust out the grinder. I don't wanna have to do all this extra stuff. So I tried to make every single cut as perfect as I could, all right? And that required me to really, you know, pay attention to what's going on, you know, how, how the torch is cutting. You know, then I started thinking about the thickness of the pipe, which is, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty thin compared to you know the thickness of the of the angle which is pretty thick and so you know you have that this idea of uh where's all the heat going from the from the torch so there's a lot of little things that you know i kind of i'm not sure if they're they're true or not but in my experience right now you know i was just trying to look at the little details that you know made a difference in you know whether you have a nicer cut and then at one point I even practiced just washing away some of the weld. You know, I was trying to figure out ways to make it like, to have both pieces on each end, the angle and the pipe as clean as possible when I'm done cutting. And, you know, so it's just little things like that, dude, that you just start practicing that you just, you know, because out in the field, dude, you're gonna use a torch for just about anything and everything that you, like things that you don't even think about, dude. And so when you have an opportunity that presents itself, use that you know think about it and like all right 
here's what I can do with this. You know, here's how I can learn from it. I took, you know, you take a simple task and you try to change it into a way that you can learn something from it, all right? And that's what I did here. So I wanna share with you guys, you know, the little tips and tricks that I found uh, with torch cutting just from, just from today, honestly. Well, actually today, yesterday, the day before that, but you know, a lot of these things too, they're gonna seem pretty obvious. You know, they're gonna seem repeated because you know, they are, but you know, what I like to do is I like to think, you know, the why, the why behind it, you know, the, the I always think about, you know, this, this, uh, this phrase, like the theory of construction, you know, like how, you know, once you kind of figure out how things work and how things react, as far as construction goes, it'll help you, you know, in my opinion, it'll help, you know, quite a bit. So yeah, so I'm gonna take you guys through cutting some angle. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys through cutting uh, that pipe off of the angle. And that's about it. I mean, you know, pretty short video, I hope. Uh, yeah, so. So I actually, uh, I tried, but you know, doing it, it was pretty hard with the weld around and, you know, trying to cut through the weld and you know such a thin uh metal so that's where heat really comes into play but <clears throat> you know doing that and kind of setting your mind for that that mindset you know you kind of yeah you just start to discover different things you start looking at and you see like okay this didn't work let me try it like this that didn't work let me try it like this and then you keep trying different things and then you know then you, you can come back on those. Oh well, it didn't work when I did it that time. So why is it gonna work this time? Oh, maybe it'll, maybe maybe this is why it'll work. So you try to you just try to start thinking about it, dude. You know, and yeah, and then that's it. That's pretty crazy. I never knew that. That's pretty sick, honestly. So we're in the weld shop right now. And these are the things I'm replacing. And those go in there. Here, I'm just trying to explain uh, basically what I was taught when starting a torch. You want to be able to squeeze the trigger and those little flames right there, kind of have them be the same size. Another thing to think about is the angle of your torch. You know, you don't want to have crooked cuts. You can have a straight line, but if it's, you know, angled up or down, it's still going to be, you know, it's not going to be a square cut. So angle it right, hold it good, have it parallel with the piece. So in order to have the cleanest cut possible, it's very important that you preheat your material. And I slowed the footage down to show uh, just basically how long I was preheating this, which was about 20 seconds. And basically what I kind of, in order to have a clean cut, dude, you have to have, you know, the, a good balance of speed versus uh, heat. If it's too cold, um, you're gonna have to spend a little more time and 
you know, with the torch, any little movement, you're going to see that. So the smoother you can have that movement, you know, the quicker you can kind of glide across that piece, you know, the better your cut's going to come out. Here is the importance of holding your torch square. You can see the pieces are kind of cut a little bit off, but some of them are right. And a bit of advice, um, you know, don't be scared to use a torch. You know, I know the grinder is so available and it has a clean cut, but, you know, kind of mastering the torch is such, you know, I don't know, it's such a, it comes in so handy, dude. It's quicker. Um, you know, you can do a lot of different things with the short with with the torch You know, you can see here. I'm just kind of practicing uh, Holding at a different angle trying to still cut a straight line trying to still cut a square line um, and Then a little bit later the next cut uh, I practice with my left hand So, you know, you got to practice. That's the only way you're gonna get better with a lot of these things dude is just doing them over and over and over again you know, you find different ways and you know, you practice those ways and you know that's that's just how you get better so don't stop trying you know just do different things and uh you know you'll get better at it eventually it's gonna take time but you know like with anything you know the more you put into it the more you're gonna get out of it You know, although I didn't accomplish, uh, let me show you guys the ones that I cut before. You know, some of them, they're kind of just like that. So I didn't necessarily accomplish my goal. You know, I got kind of close. But either the pipe or the angle kind of got messed up. So it was kind of difficult, but, you know, in the process, so I basically learned, you know, this, this idea of heat transfer from different metals to different metals. When it makes sense, you know, the thicker, the thicker the metal, the longer it's gonna take the heat up. But when you have to cut something like this, where you have this thicker metal to a thinner piece, you know, it just helps you, uh, help me get better cuts. You know, I eventually got down. Maybe, maybe eventually I'll get it perfect, but, you know, from that to that is not bad. You know, you don't want to gouge into the into the base middle. It's not bad. 